Oh, are we up? Are we up? It's trying? Yeah, it's trying. Uh -uh. <laughs> no more shots at whiskey. What do we got there? Yeah, let's have some more shots. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I'm happy to have to, to just Nick, drink the sherry. We need, some, we need some more whiskey or something. Surprise with some shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pour random. All right, here we go. Oh, we're back All live right. in Texas. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Welcome to the life of a Sarasota County teacher. No kidding. So I didn't say that out loud, and uh, please, Doctor Asplund, if you <laughs> see this, don't fire me. <laughs> All right. So, About the comment. The alcohol you can fire all day long. Uh, I'm not on the clock. Thank you very much. All right. So I think we left off with Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Yes. And um, she is an incredible woman who really changed um, the way we look at Florida's nature. Um, she was instrumental in getting things like the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act and redirecting the Everglades back to the way they were and all of that stuff. Um, in her What's lifetime. unfortunate is now she's been associated with school shootings, but... Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. But she's an incredible woman um, who really made a huge difference in Florida history. Yeah. Um, and we, and uh, it's good that the school was named after her, um, unfortunately, the events that happened there. All right, and then that moves us over to John D. McDonald. And he's kind of the beginning of the great Florida writers. Um, now, you have Hemingway back there. And especially, and on, especially on that on the West Coast. Exactly. And he is a... Um, creates that mystery and the private eye kind of character who goes and does tons of amazing things. That's right. Have another one for Jack. <laughs> All right? So... We talked to, about tra uh, about John D. McDonald and stuff like that. Three of his, um, th three of the authors that he really influenced are three of our favorites. Yes, and that's Carl Hyson, Tim Dorsey, and oh. Randy Wayne, Wayne White. White. And so I was looking at Carl Hy. Actually, when I was doing all three of them, one of the things that they all have in common is they all wrote for some kind of newspaper at some yep. time first. So. Um, Carl H or Carl Heisen still writes for the Miami Herald. Yep. Tim Dorsey wrote for the Tampa Tribune, and then um, Randy Wayne White wrote for the Fort Myers Press. Yeah, and I think that gave them a tremendous amount of information to go and write, especially Tim Dorsey, because he wrote on the police beat for <laughs> about ten years in uh, Tampa and uh, St. Pete, and I'm sure that he just recorded oh. all of the stuff that happened, and his books are just that kind And of he stuff. had lots of ties to Sarasota, even, yeah. too. He lived in Sarasota and actually wrote for the Tampa Dream for the Sarasota Beats. Yeah. Um, one of the best stories, that we I've been following him for a long time, but he told a story for all of you old Sarasota natives... He used to live in an apartment building behind the old Dairy Queen on 301, right. which is over by the where the Ford dealership is, which was kind of what we always refer to it as the Dirt Dairy Queen before it was torn down. Okay. Not the greatest neighborhood in town, but one of his favorite stories was he had just gotten to Sarasota. They put him up in this, this little <laughs> hotel, just, I mean, fallen down building. And he was upstairs, and he was kind of unsure of the neighborhood. It wasn't the best neighborhood at all. And I think he was about 3 in the morning one night. All of a sudden, he heard, bam, 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 and a, on his door. And a loud, deep voice was like, come on out of there. And so he was terrified. He's the only thing that he had. He said he had a dive knife. And so he's at the front door and, with his dive knife. He's like, what? What do you want? And the guy goes, come out of here, Mike. And he's like, Mike's, I'm not Mike. <laughs> I'm Tim. He's like, and the guy instantly changed. He goes, Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I meant to be next door. <laughs> and that's in one of his books. That's in one of his books. He actually so, used his, his stories with that. <laughs> so we've had the opportunity to meet him a bunch of times, yeah. and we go and get his book sign, our, his book signed when he's in Sarasota yeah. and stuff like that. And his books are just hilarious because his main character, Sir J. Storms, is schizophrenic. And he's a serial killer. He's but he loves Florida. Florida loves Florida history and everything about it. So yeah. I could suggest to anyone that's a, a great series. Yeah. So the book that starts off that series is Florida Roadkill. So if you get the opportunity, that's the one to start. Now, there's two ways to read it. There is a chronological way to read it, and then there is just when they were published. Yeah. Um, I suggest going and reading it chronologically because it the stories 
uh, really fill out better, and you can. Kind and you'll of be able to look it. online, and, and there's a bunch of different you know sites that will give you the, the that chronological way exactly to read it by, by story. So. Exactly, and um, but, but he, but he, I mean, he talks everything Florida. And one of my one of my favorite one of the books is Orange Crush, uh-huh. which actually is follows the election. So which exactly, is which is perfect right for it's this time of year in Florida. Um, my favorite is Gator Gogo, and actually, there's a speech in there where Serge and Coleman somehow end up at a preschool graduation. <laughs> I have no, I, I don't remember how, but he gives this speech, and this I read this speech to my seniors every year. Right? Yeah. One of my favorites is that um, rubber and glue, or I'm rubber, your glue doesn't work in a knife fight. Yeah. All right. <laughs> he tells this to preschoolers. Exactly. So, exactly. so, yeah. so you can see their parents' faces yeah. getting, what the hell is going on here? And what, like I said, there's Surge that we talk about, but his, his right-hand man is Coleman. Coleman. And how did Coleman get his name? Coleman got his name because he became famous because he got in the newspaper because his dad put him in a Coleman cooler and he was found in a Coleman cooler. For for, for hours and hours and cold and he came out with frostbite. And- <laughs> exactly. Now, Coleman is my favorite brand of coolers and stuff. To yeah. Use too. So every time I see my Coleman cooler, I just have Needless to laugh. Needless to say, Carmen, or Coleman is not the sharpest stick in the bunch. Uh, yeah, yeah, because Coleman does a tremendous amount of drugs. And Alcohol and and else. A ton. <laughs> ton. Now, Carl Heisen, his books, he's got a, a whole bunch of different styles of books because he's got his books for adults. And my favorite character in there is Skink, yeah. who is a former Florida governor <laughs> who just got fed up with life and said, I'm screw it, and I'm going out into the woods. Yeah. And he lives out there. And uh, his roadkill cuisine. Yes, as they call it. Only eats roadkill. Only t- and yep. and unlike you know what's neat about Carl Heisen is Carl 